Welcome to the Scourgey Law Lunch Break. This is your time of the day to learn a little bit about the law while you enjoy your lunch. Today we'll talk about everyone's favorite topic, alimony. Historically, alimony has been deductible to the payor and taxable as income to the payee. The tax deductibility of alimony provided an incentive for higher income earning spouses to agree to pay alimony because they would get a nice tax deduction for it, and tax deductions are more beneficial to higher income earners because they have a higher tax burden to start with. In many cases, lower or non-income earning, otherwise referred to as dependent spouses, would have little or no income tax liability after taking into consideration the standard deduction and other various deductions. So the tax liability of alimony was not as important to them. Well, then came the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. This is the big tax cut bill proposed by President Trump and congressional Republicans. This new tax act eliminates deductions for alimony payments required by post-2018 divorce agreements. For payments required under divorce or separation agreements or instruments that are executed after December 31st of 2018, the new law eliminates the deduction for alimony payments. And because tax deduction is eliminated, tax inclusion for the recipient is eliminated as well. So recipients of affected alimony payments will no longer have to include them in their taxable income. For individuals who must pay alimony, this change can be expensive because the tax savings from being able to deduct alimony payments can be substantial. Now, there's no change in the federal income tax treatment of divorce-related payments that are required by divorce agreements that are executed before 2019. Whether payments required by pre-2019 divorce agreements qualify as tax-deductible alimony or not deter is determined strictly by applying the applicable language in the Internal Revenue Code. So we're talking about if you're about to enter into an alimony agreement or if a court is about to issue uh, an alimony order, uh, you're under current law until January 1st of 2019. And in our current law, the IRS is going to look at those payments. And the IRS will determine whether or not they're alimony. Uh, they may be alimony if the spouses don't file a joint return with each other. The payment is in cash, including checks. The payment is to or for a spouse or a former spouse made under a divorce or separation instrument. The divorce or separation instrument doesn't designate the payment as not alimony. The spouses aren't members of the same household when the payment is made. There's no liability to make the payment after the death of the recipient, and the payment isn't treated as child support or a property settlement. Those are the factors that must be satisfied for the IRS to characterize payments as alimony under current law. Divorcing spouses who wish to gain or maintain the tax deductibility need to get an agreement or instrument entered very soon, now or the next couple of months, but before uh, the end of 2018. And if you finalize in 2018 an agreement on alimony, it will remain deductible for the payor and includable as income tax for the payee for the duration of your agreement. Even if you modify your agreement in the future, you can still retain the deductibility and taxable status of alimony unless your modification expressly provides that the new law should govern modifications going forward. So if you want to maintain the deductibility and includability of alimony under current tax law, you got to get your deals done now before the end of the year. That's about all the time we have today for the Scrooge Law Lunch Break. I hope you learned a little bit about alimony law. Enjoy your lunch.